Uh, very good evening to all. Today's uh, my topic for discussion is common agents and technique for uh, technique for local anesthesia for cataract surgery and their potential complication. <clears throat> Desired properties of LA is uh, uh, the history. First of all, history. Polar uh, and NAP used cocaine uh, as a first ocular anesthesia. Then Wallin describes the ocular anesthesia by local injection of the cocaine. Then, Fitch, then Whitman described the topical anesthesia. Gills gave the uh, intracameral technique for cataract surgery. Then uh, Amar Agarwal gives no anesthesia technique, but it was failed to popularize. Later on, uh, Uteres and Carmona uh, describe his, uh, this no anesthesia technique as a cryo-anesthesia, in which they, uh, they advise to use all the solutions at four degrees centigrade uh, temperature and uh, then Jaluk and jelly were given by the Caucasia. The local anesthetic agent should be non-toxic, non-irritating. It should be, it should have a rapid onset of action. There should not be any uh, local after effects and it must be effective on tissues as well as the mucous membrane. The agents can uh, it is divide the agents are divided into esters and amides. Amides can be long acting like tetracan, short acting like procaine, and surface action uh, can like uh, benzocaine and cocaine. The amides can be long acting like vipuacaine and ropivacaine, and medium acting like lidocaine. These are some common local anesthetic agents uh, properties, as we can see in the table. The vinoxinate is having shortest onset of action of six to twenty seconds. Whereas topical 4% lignocaine is having 10 to 30, 35 second uh, onset of action and remain for 20 minutes, uh, while vipuacaine remain for 90 minutes. Uh, for to uh, lignocaine, uh, the toxic dose is uh, more than 3 mg per kg body weight, and for vipuacaine, it is 2 mg per kg body weight. Mechanism of action the, the Anesthesia enters inside the cell in unionized form. Uh, after entering, it gets ionized and binds with the protein of the sodium-gated channel and blocks the sodium influx. So, blocks the depolarization. Hence, uh, it uh, initiation and propagation of the action potential fails. The local anesthetic agents techniques are like it can be topical and uh, regional. Topical. We can use 4% lignocaine instilled at 5 to 10 minutes interval or 2% gylocaine jelly into the inferior fornix. Or we can use injection oculin intracamerally, which is a preservative and adrenaline free uh, lignocaine 1%. Uh, now we can also use phenocaine plus, which is having tropicamide, phenylephrine, and lidocaine. So it also has an effect of uh, pupillary dilatation intraoperatively. Then we can also uh, use masquerade technique in which we use 4% lignocaine topical drops followed by 0.5% tetracaine swap to the limbus, then followed by 0.5% uh, 0.5 ml of 1% uh, preservative free lignocaine into the anterior chamber. Original anesthesia, we use local anesthetic agents lignocaine along with bibiocaine and hyaluronidase and adrenaline. Adrenaline causes uh, local vasoconstriction, which leads to uh, less systemic absorption and hence increases the bioavailability, increases the uh, duration of action, and there is less blood loss during the surgery. Uh, it should be contraindicated in the cardiovascular and hypertensive patients. The hyaluronidase facilitates the local spread into the tissues. Uh, then techniques are like retrovalvular anesthesia, in which we give the anesthesia into the cone uh, of the muscles. So it blocks the ciliary nerve ganglion and third and sixth cranial nerves, echinacea, anesthesia, and it causes echinacea and anesthesia of the globe. Uh, here, uh, because of uh, list of these ocular and systemic complications, we don't use retrovalve anesthesia now. So perivalve anesthesia is the uh, most common used technique nowadays in which we uh, inject the uh, block inject, inject the anesthetic agent into the peribulbar space where it spreads into the lid and the other spaces. Approximately 5 to 10 ml uh, anesthesia we use. Uh, in this technique, we don't uh, redirect the needle as we uh, redirect in the retrobulbar anesthesia. 
but in peribulbar we don't redirect so we don't go into the muscle cone we remain in the peribulbar space only uh, here during peribulbar anesthesia we, we should always keep the bevel needle in the it should direct the globe only and we should always uh, check the eye movement before pushing the block next is parabulbar or subtenance block in which we uh, we first put a topical propyracane then with the help of viscous scissor we put an incision approximately four to five mm away from the limbus in the inflonasal quadrant with the help of then create a subtenance space and with the help of stevens cannula metal stevens cannula we put the uh, anesthetic, anesthetic agent approximately two to three ml at the peri equatorial plane then other blocks are like uh, facial nerve blocks are also being used uh, as an uh, adjunct to the retrovalvular block in the earlier time. Uh, different uh, different types of uh, techniques has been uh, described like wall lint, O'Brien, uh, then uh, nat bath and Raman and Atkinson techniques. Then complications of the local anesthetic agents are subconjectival hemorrhage. We uh, most commonly see the subconjectival hemorrhage doesn't cause much effect, but if there is like C60 subconjectival hemorrhage uh, along with uh, uh, ecchymosis and uh, chemosis, there's a severe pain, then there is chance of retrovalvular hemorrhage. In such cases, we should put ice packs and uh, give a proper massage, and we can also give diamox and mannitol, and uh, should always rule out CRO with the help of uh, uh, IDO. Then uh, in emergency, we can do the lateral cancetomy. Then uh, we can, there, our chances of glow perforation in uh, like peribulbar and retrovalvular anesthesia in cases of uh, high myopic patients. So we should always avoid uh, such technique in high myops. And we should always check side by side movement before pushing the block or before injecting it also. And then uh, we should always defer the OT uh, if there is a very soft globe after the block. And there are chances of optic nerve injury if uh, like that is why we should always give the block in a primary case position only, not in uh, any other. And anaphylactic reaction can occur, can occur and uh, muscle paralysis can occur. Oculocardic reflexes are common. Uh, hence, uh, we should always be vigilant. To summarize my uh, topic of presentation, uh, the lignocaine is the most common uh, locality agent used. Uh, always ensure the test dose and I before giving the block. We should always be careful with the use of adenine and BPVAC in cases of cardiac patients. And uh, peribulba is the most common in India, followed by subtenance and topical, where the subtenance is most common in UK and peribulba in Singapore, as shown in the studies. We should not redirect the needle during the peribulba block and always check the eye moment before pushing the local anesthetic agent. And we should always be vigilant for the potential complications and ready with the management in the block room. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Arun. You can yes. unshare the screen and answer the questions. Just a minute. Then you can answer okay. the questions parallelly. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, am I audible, uh, Dr. Saptagiri? Sure. Yes, yes, sir. sir. Yes, Very sir. well audible, sir. Hi. Yeah, good evening. Sorry, I came a little late, but uh, I got to listen to the presentation. Uh, just a couple of questions, uh, Arun. Um, when you're giving a peribulba block, uh, what needle do you want to use? Sir, 24 uh, gas needle. 24 gauge needle, how long? Uh, sir, it should be uh, like uh, plus. Okay, in retrobulbar, what needle do you want to use? The retrobulbar, uh, we use 25 mm, sir, because we have to read no, no, the needle. And what go. needle do you want to use? The same, sir, uh, 25, 24, 25 gauge needle. 24 gauge needle. How long is it? Uh, it is a uh, 25 mm in retro so it's One inch. Yes, sir. One inch, okay. 
and uh, peribulbar also you want to use the same needle no sir it should be shorter it should be length should be smaller than the retro how much how much see the so, reason why i'm saying is uh, usually in uh, retro bulbar the classical retro bulbar needles are actually 25 gauge and they are sometimes even one and half one and half inches long because you need to go into the cone so they tend to be longer yes okay classically you are supposed to use only a half inch needle for a per peribulbar block because you don't need to go into the cone of the muscle yes sir. you just need to stay at the orbital rim Yes. which means you actually are supposed to know how long is the inferior orbital rim what is the distance from the inferior orbital rim to the orbital apex any idea any chance because that is the most important thing for giving a block right yes, because if you take a, a 25 mm needle and you go right up to the hub of the needle at the orbital rim you have actually 25 mm into the orbit yes sir the actually inferior orbit is not more than 35 mm oh, yes, so you're reaching very high into the very deep into the orbit you're going so definitely you're entering easily into the peripheral into retrobulbar space hmm. right so about 35 to 40 mm is what's the normal length of the floor i mean the from the inferior orbital rim to the apex that's why when you're giving a peribulbar block it's prudent not to use a any any needle which is not more than a, a half an inch because if you stay at the hub and inject at the orbital rim with a half inch you're actually in the truly in the peribulbar space okay yes right understand the difference okay yes. good uh, uh, what are you using you, you must be giving, giving a lot of uh, peribulbar blocks right Yes. Sir. So what what needle are you using? Sir, twenty four twenty four gas needle. Ah, and that is one inch, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Let. Yeah. Yes. Twenty three or twenty four gauge needle. Uh. Uh. Why? Like. Uh. When when we uh, when I was doing my post graduation, uh, the uh, at that time our teachers our teachers were uh, actually used to uh, doing. Uh, retrobulb blocks and they were giving beautiful retrobulb blocks 2 cc uh, the eyeball will be i mean won't move at all but it's it's as you said there uh, uh, there were a lot of uh, uh, dangers with that so that is how the peribulb block came and we were actually doing it with a uh, uh, half inch 2060 needle okay okay sir so okay, you get a, 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 a as uh, uh, something is uh, said like you don't if it is very bulb you don't not you don't uh, need to go beyond that okay yes, uh, mm -hmm. but the problem with it is that mm -hmm. it is very thin needle uh, and 2016 needle and uh, the you, you don't uh, with this half inch uh, going in uh, the when you do with this uh, 23 or 24 g needle uh, uh, one inch uh, needle block you you get a block I man uh, whatever however it is you, you get a block but that never used to uh, uh, really happen on uh, more than 50% of the cases and we used to get shouted upon by by our uh, teachers and all i what uh, uh, what are you doing uh, and all so uh, but then uh, i'll tell you when i uh, came to shankara only i saw those 1 uh, uh, inch uh, 23 or 24 g needle block being given and as uh, said it's it it is It, it, not a classical peribulbar block they are happening it's it's somewhere in between some bit of it is nearing that uh, retro it, no you're not actually going into the uh, mm -hmm. yes, it, it's sort of, so, so that is it so that is a uh, uh, one part of it uh, and if you 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 have seen uh, topical uh, surgery is being done right so yes, so what Uh, what what is the anesthesia uh, being done? Are, are, are you using so why are you using uh, xylocaine or propracaine? And if propracaine, why uh, if xylocaine? Why uh, what uh, can you comment on it? Sir, uh, here uh, sir, like consultants are using propracaine along with the ocular injection, ocular surgery, intracameral. So so. 
so you, do you really feel that uh, uh, that uh, okay land see it's not see probably you can uh, uh, use the term okay land because it's it's uh, when in, in a presentation like this better not to use it but uh, that, that because there are other companies coming out with the same uh, same preparation it's a combination of uh, what all are there you have uh, uh, lidocaine uh, phenylephrine and Propicamide, right? So yes, in, in, in a, a very a very low, low low doses. See, even without that, even without that, a uh, uh, simple uh, proper cane is good enough. But uh, okay. see, if, if uh, the advantage with uh, the intracameral is that if in case there is an iris touch, people won't uh, uh, constrict and all of those. Okay. Yes. So so that is uh, uh, about uh, the topical anesthesia and uh, so, so if we, if we given given a choice between a subtenance block and the peribulbar block which one would you prefer and why sir subtenance block why sir uh, because chances of uh, complications like uh, peribulbar uh, like perforation and uh, uh, other things are lesser in subtenance block. What are the other things? Uh, like, sir, uh, retrovalbar hemorrhage. And, uh, what are the systemic complications? Right? Yes. Yeah. Systemic complications. Because uh, 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 it's, it's, uh, it, it really can't happen with the, the subtenance block. Like, because, see, ma ma many of the complications uh, uh, are that happen with, because only we are using only 2 ml, that is one. And it's yes. not a sharp needle, and the chance that it goes into a, a blood vessel uh, is not there. Yes. Okay. So, yes. so this is it. O overall, uh, your presentation was good. You have uh, covered uh, most of it. Uh, but Arun, you should yes. know what needle you are using. Sir <laughs> so asked you, yes. what is the uh, length of the needle? You didn't know that. That should not happen. Okay. Yes. Otherwise. Okay. Uh, uh, good presentation. You have uh, uh, researched well. I mean, your uh, it's it's such a comprehensive presentation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, just another small note, uh, Arun. Uh, you're saying that you'll be using adrenaline in your blocks for uh, cataract anesthesia, is it? Yes, sir. Uh, what is the need for giving adrenaline in the block, variable bulb blocks? Sir. Uh, Adrenaline causes a local vasoconstriction. Uh, then that is why, like systemic absorption will be lesser, and there will be uh, less amount of anesthesia will be needed, and uh, chances okay. of hemorrhage will be lesser. Okay, but uh, you know the caveat is that if you use adrenaline in the orbit, what if you have a vessel uh, constricting, artery is constricted, you can have loss of blood supply. CR chances of yes, sir. Yeah, so potentially you are putting the patient at risk for any other ischemic problems. Yes, sir. So whatever studies have been done where they've compared adrenaline without adrenaline, they found no difference. So the, the, the current recommendation actually is not to use adrenaline when okay. you're giving a peribulbar block because in case it goes retrobulbar, then you're staring at a central retinal artery occlusion. Right? Okay, sir. And another thing is when you're mentioning canthotomy, when you have a retrobulbar hemorrhage, which I'm sure all of us will have at some time in our lifetime, is that it's not just canthotomy, it is also cantholysis. Okay. So only canthotomy will not release the pressure in the orbit. You have yes. to do a cantholysis, say inferior yes. cantholysis, right? So once you do an inferior cantholysis, the blood which is there in the peribulbar space will actually trickle out. Okay. And the, the, because the lid tension is also reduced immediately, the globe has sort of space to move around and the tension on the globe is reduced. So these are the two things that will happen when you do a cantholysis. Okay? Okay. okay. Good. Very good. Okay. That's all from my Thank end. You. Thank you. Yeah, I have, I mean, this is very comprehensive and it was a well-researched presentation. But I just, one last question just to end it, just for the sake of ending it. What is the uh, end point of anesthesia? What what are you looking at in today's in modern cataract surgery when you're giving any block or topical? What is that one thing that you're looking at? 
So you can inject 10 ml and the patient will still move sometimes. It happens, you know, the whole syringe is gone and the, nothing has happened. Patient is still moving. What are you going to do? Are you going to inject more? Uh, sir, I would check for NLGC at least. Yeah. Like if there is NLGC, uh, we can manage somehow. But if not, it is difficult. I think I think that was the right answer because the everything is for the patient comfort at this point in time. So even if you know if, if the patient is comfortable, that's the end point of anesthesia and in routine cataract surgery in modern times, I would say. Yes, sir. thanks. It was a great presentation. Yeah, just just one thing that you uh, missed out. You uh, told about uh, uh, adrenaline and uh, your your uh, block. Uh, you didn't mention anything about uh, about uh, hyaluronidase in. Uh, uh, don't you, don't you use uh, hyaluronidase and uh, mix uh, uh, allies in, uh, in no, your sir, block? I have, I have mentioned in the slides. Okay, okay. The edges. Okay. No. <laughs> okay, 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 fine, 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 fine. Doctor Arun, yes. you can unshare your screen. Ma'am, I'm not able to. I'm going to close it. Otherwise, I'm oh, not God. able to. No. <laughs> close and rejoin, ma'am. Okay. Uh, okay. Ah, it's quite close. Yeah. yeah.